All right, uh, quickly in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to get our uh, rather rushed but um, finished up um, concept vehicle here, and we need to set this up so we have views to be able to transform and create this in 3D. So if you've chosen 3D software, so I'm going to make sure that um, you know either these are all grouped together at least, or you could flatten them out so. Um, now we can easily access them again. And we're gonna start building this up now. We've got a couple of options here. Um, this is currently an A4 uh, 300 DPI image. Um, if we wanna extend our image out, if we wanna keep a high res image, we can do that. Uh, a couple of options, we can go to image, go to canvas size, and we can manually go in here and change it to, you know, extend it out. Say if we want it to be 40 centimeters wide, and you can choose what direction it's going to be sending that. There you go. Yep, great. And it's going to extend out. Now, it, it'll typically create the background color, whatever your secondary color is here. So you may wish to change that. If your background is white, change that to white. You can always do it otherwise, but your yeah, image, canvas size, do that again. The other option is with your crop tool. So shortcut for this is C. There's our crop tool there in our toolbar. And this allows us to actually physically drag out and decide how big we want our image. So that is another option there. Um, word of warning when it comes to doing this kind of stuff is uh, it can cause your image to get bigger and bigger. So now we're looking at four times A4, so you may start getting some slowdown. And you've got to ask, do I really need that resolution? But um, you know, let's give it a go and see how it works. Now, uh, I currently have my rulers up bring this up, you can go view and tick on rulers. And the trick with designing this stuff is you really want to make sure everything kind of lines up. So rules are an option. We can click and sort of drag those in there. Um, now, we have some options with the rulers, and this is a snap option. So snap to guide, snap to layers. Uh, it's pretty handy, but I'm actually going to turn that off um, because as we get into it, it's sort of going to get a little bit annoying. We're going to try and snap to things that we don't want. Um, and we might want to drop that down. And we just want to line up some of the key elements. So I'm going to quickly sort of give you an idea on how to do a, a front and maybe a top-down view of, of our vehicle. Um, you know, that's, that's a good start. Um, so lines are, you know, using the guidelines is pretty good for this. It can show us where we need our stuff to be. Um, our other option is to create a new layer. And make sure you do create a new layer and don't draw on your existing layer. I'm going to go to view and uh, turn off extras, which is going to basically hide the guides. They're still there. And I'm going to grab myself a brush. Let's choose something that's going to be similar, like a, a blue or something like that. And this is what I'm going to change to the pencil tool. Now, a pencil tool typically does a good solid line. Um, and I don't actually want the pen, pen pressure on on this, so um, jump into that for preferences here and make sure shape dynamics is unticked. I just want to get a good solid line. And there's lots of ways of doing this. We get a nice, fairly small line. Whoop, accidentally clicked in there. And what we can do with this is we're going to be using our shift tool, so find out where you want to draw a line. And try not to accidentally press the right button on the mouse, on the uh, pen and draw that down. So you want to make sure it's fairly light, but even that size is a bit too big. I'll just drop the size a bit. And we can drop that down and go, yeah, cool. And wherever we need a reference point. Huge lag from the video recording here as well. So take my finger off shift and start drawing, holding down shift, and it will place your, place your pen tool and then start drawing. And we just want to get some guide points that. Now if these are too obvious we can drop the opacity down on them but I'm going to keep them fairly obvious for this part and we want to make sure that we don't draw our image in there otherwise we're going to have to clean up some blue lines and we want to create another nut, another layer. We'll place up below. Let's call this line work. This is the, uh, the layer with the lines and I'm also going to right click on that and I'm going to choose something like blue so I can see yeah that's my line work. All right, uh, on my new layer, we're going to run through you know, a lot of the same sort of thing. This is actually where it can get a little bit tricky. Um, I 
pretty normal. Um, so one of the things you might want to do is this layer here, which has our vehicle in it. Again, I haven't flattened this, but oh, that's fine. Um, yeah, very finicky. Uh, I'm going to duplicate that if you want. This is an interesting, you know, technique, and we can just sort of holding down shift. It's going to keep its conventions. Drop that in there. I'm just going to drop the opacity down fairly low. So it's going to give me a nice, you know, nice little ghost effect of my vehicle, so I can start sort of drawing this out. And from there, let's start defining this. So I'm just going to drop that down even lower. I just want it just as a very faint view. Um, so from there, we can start defining. I'm actually going to need to uh, increase my page. So I'm just going to see if I crop again, bring that out a little bit more. Okay. okay. There it is there. Now, if this starts getting too laggy, I may need to uh, reduce the image size, but let's, let's see how we go. I'm going to switch back to my brush tool and I'm going to make sure that we're back onto a sort of a hard brush area. Now, we can try and manually draw this in, or you know, we may want to start looking at um, you know, just loosely drawing this in. So I'm going to start with a horizontal line. Let's actually get something more conducive to our color. So, and I'll start drawing some stuff in. So I can see that this is sort of a straight line here. We do have a dome effect there. So we've got I've tried to put like a double fisheye weirdy sort of thing. I've drawn in lines for that. So um, aerial view, you know, maybe I grab my marquee tool ellipse and just drop a color in there. Now I've kind of define my my shape a bit more so you know I might want to actually start using um, you know, my, my colors uh, my, my selected variances a bit more and you can manually start painting this in um, I have intentionally done this on a sort of symmetrical thing it does help with vehicles other option is we can start grabbing our lasso tool and start going you know what I've got a pretty good idea of the shape of this um, and I'm just using references and trying to match them up. So I'm sort of looking at this area here and going, okay, it's kind of close to that. And you kind of need to think a little bit in 3D. So I'm drawing the top view here. Um, I'm trying to get that top fin sort of where it would fit in. Probably need to do a few more um, sort of lines for this. But that's fine for now. And I'm just going to say this. Um, because we don't actually have a physical model yet, we're actually just sort of having to preempt where everything is. And I'm going to just back I'm going to close that shape off. Let's hit uh, G for gradient, and I'm just going to uh, paint bucket here. I'm just going to drop color in. Um, so that's kind of hitting that top part there. I'm going to grab a lasso tool again. It's kind of like a thin thing that pops out here. So let's see if we can line that up. Um, you know, maybe it's going to be something like this. And I'm going to change, choose a different shade for that. And I'm going to hit G. That's actually going to fill in. Uh, I'm going to avoid the other ones because it is a different shade. Um, so that's kind of getting there. We're getting a rough idea of where that's going. We've got this wing section here. Um, you can see it starts here, ends there. So um, again, you may need to move this stuff down if it's going to start taking over. But let's see how we go. Um, so starting in there, and we can sort of see it kind of pops in and around. And then we can sort of try and guess where the things are going to be. It kind of pops out over the top. Um, we do run into this sort of uh, turbine part as well. So I'm going to try and preempt that a little bit. It sort of comes out to there. And heads in. We'll worry about these technical lines in a little bit. And I'm just going to fill that in with a bit of bucket tool. Um, so I've got these weird crossover things. Most of these are actually sort of, you know, you might see able to see one or two of these sort of popping out. So I might just drop like one in. Close that off. 
and I'm going to drop in the dark color for there as well. So, you know, while we are just blocking it in, we do still want to get a rough idea of what's going on. All right. Um, so I'm going to drop in this propeller thing here. Now we can still use that original propeller. So um, if I jump into where we have the vehicle, I might still have that as a separate layer. No, it's tied into this one. That's fine. Um, so I'm just going to go on that layer. I'm going to grab my selection tool and that layer. So I'm going to control J, copy and paste in place. And let's move that down there. And I'm going to drag that out of there and place it in there. Now it's, it's proportions are wrong. So control T and do some correctional transformations and stuff like that. Um, to try and get it so it's a little bit more appropriate for the image. It's kind of tilted back, so it's kind of close. Uh, do a bit of clean up if need be. Um, now just remember, when it comes to doing your 3D model, you may need to um, really assess how much detail you're going to do in this and whether it's going to be a physical build or whether it's going to be, um, you know, whether you're going to use displacement maps or whether or not it's just going to be a decal or whether or not you just need to simplify your object. Now, in certain instances, if you do have a lot of detail in a particular element, you may need to think about uh, concepting that separately. So you may need to go, well, I've got this turbine in here, but you know, how am I going to make that work? Um, so sometimes you can have a little offshoot, sort of like, you know, here's a character and this is their separate weapon. All right, so that's kind of in there. We've got these domes, which I did earlier, but you know, that's by the by. Um, to a certain degree, you can sort of step out from the usual place um, because you will have distortion. Remember, this is, you know, you've got to kind of use a bit of artistic license when you're doing this kind of thing. Um, you are going to be building it in 3D, so you need to be aware that it is a three-dimensional curved object at the same time, um, whilst looking at it as a schematic. Um, so it's kind of getting there. It looks a bit weird and wonderful, but that's you know, a part of the fun. Um, this turbine's not really playing ball for me, so I'm just going to grab that again and transform. And Forgotten to switch back to the other layer, but it's fine. We can rebuild. Cool. Um, I'm just going to merge those together just for simplification matters. And let's drop in a lighter color then. Great. All right, so, you know, it's kind of getting there. Um, you know, this, whoops. All right, a little lag, a little lag, there we go. Um, it's kind of getting there, but, you know, let's let's look at, you know, duplicating this out and cleaning everything up. So, um, vehicle copy we can kick out. Come on. Line work does help, but probably a bit too obtrusive. I'm gonna drop the, the uh, capacity of that. All right, so this is our layer that we've just created. We duplicate him, control T, transform, and flip. Oops, sorry, wrong one. Flip the vertical. Let's drag him down. Now, not all your object, all your vehicles are going to be symmetrical, so you know, do keep that in mind. Um, you know, it's always good to sort of change stuff around, but you know, it's a, it's a, good, it's a quick way of doing this. Um, that's fairly close. I'm going to right-click and merge those two together, and let's do some cleanup. Um, so. If you're happy with this, great, but it's, as I said, we're just kind of blocking it out. You may want to spend more time on one side than the other, but for now, this gives us a good opportunity to start sort of doing a bit of a, bit of a clean up. So um, I'm actually going to jump in and with the solid eraser and then you know, keeping in mind the other part, 
Um, maybe just chuck a mask on here. So again, select the object and drop a mask on there. Great. And now I can start jumping in and just, you know, referencing. Let's move it up a bit. Um, one compared to the other. So, you know, I might look at this and go, okay, well, there's a big pointy nose bit there, but it does cut in a bit. So maybe we want to look at that. So we're coming in through like that. Close that off and let's drop in, grab our brush and sort of, okay. What we need to make sure we do is, make sure we don't paint on our mask. So that's gonna select on the main layer, holding down the Alt key, select, add the mask, click off the mask onto the object, jump with the lasso tool in. We're going to get that fairly close. I should be doing some more lines for this, but that's not part of the fun of rushing this stuff through. Okay, let's turn the opacity option back on. Can shift inverse. Cool. Um, and let's just start doing some freestyling. Put my opacity down fairly low for this, and I'm just going to start trying to figure out where everything's going to go. So I'll, I am constantly trying to reference the top part. And I'll just quickly drop all this in. Doing it super quick, but uh, and once you've kind of got an idea down, this is where you come in with your lasso tool just to help define. And once again, I'm focusing really just on one side at the moment. Um, it's more of just sort of getting the symmetry. Control Shift Inverse. Let's pop out the other wing. Great. And we focus in on some of the wing details. All right. Pre select that. And now we can select, start moving around and just sort of redefining some stuff. Getting our details in, so to speak. Um, you know, as you go, you'll probably start going, damn, I wish I'd made this a lot simpler, but you know, sometimes the challenge does bring out the best in us. Um, I need to drop the opacity on that as I'm painting, otherwise it gets kind of scratchy. Right. And let's define just a little bit more. Yeah, other thing to keep in mind is I'm actually drawing this out as a you know, front and side rendered section. Now, you may not wish to do that. You might just want to keep with uh, line work for this, and that's fine. It's not a big issue. Um, typically, what we want to do is when we are designing this stuff is we want to look at doing, okay, well, you know, I've done, um, I'm going to load up some of that. graphic brushes. Where are we? Yep, and um, I do find quadruple dash is kind of good. Um, what we will typically do with, with concepting is we'll do at least one sort of rendered out piece um, and then bring that back. 
and just break it down to line work, depending on our time frame. Um, so we can just start modeling as soon as possible. Um, and so the rendered piece is going to be our reference to sort of go, yeah, you know what, this is a, definitely a, a the view of what the 3D object should look like. Um, and we can you know, define that in 3D. So one's the beautiful concept piece and the rest are sort of the schematics, but you know, that's up to you how much sort of how much detail you want to want to put in there. All right, so we're getting an idea here. It's kind of looking a bit like a mask sort of situation, but that's fine. Um, I'm going to right click on the mask and go to apply layer masks. So that's going to define the object. I'm going to grab my rectangular marquee tool and I'm going to cut that object in half again. Get down the part that I don't use and delete. Duplicate again, transform, flip, do it again, flip vertically. There we go, put them in place. Kind of getting there. Um, and merge. Final sort of touch ups. We'll get it so it looks like they're. Uh, Single unit, share, share lighting um, and shadows, and any other effects. And you know, de decals do help to sell the sell the product. Um, so there's a there's a lower side. Same principle applies as far as doing the front and side. Um, you know, as far as the line work it goes. Once again, you know, we can maybe jump in, grab our brush. I change that to a pencil, like so. And again, we might want to start looking at you know, where things are going to line up um, accordingly. So we are going to do the front and side. You know, where does the uh, so the bubble at the top here fit in? Where does the lower part fit in? And we can just sort of start you know, just really guiding how everything ties in with these with the line work. And then you can jump in and start uh, you know, drawing up. Um, and as I said, if you do want to just stick with doing uh, line work as opposed to drawing this up, um, you know, there's a, there's a few different ways you can do that. You can obviously use a brush, make sure that the pressure isn't sent, set to um, pen pressure because so, you want to be drawing you know, straight lines for this sort of thing. And you may want to stick with that whole idea of um, you know, using the shift key to tie things down and you may you know, if we do like a tail fin there, go, okay, cool. This one's gonna pop out there. And use your shapes and stuff. I'm sort of freehanding some of the some of the areas. Uh, figure out the width from there as well. If you if you want really want to get mathematical for it. Um but for now I'm just gonna sort of Free, free draw up to get an idea. Let me sort of come up to there. Um, so you know, ideally for this, you want to use your your marquee tools, rectangles and ellipses and stuff like that. And go, yeah, that's that's really where I want to fill it in. Um, but you know, that's that's neither here nor there. And you can freehand draw and paint all that in. So anyway, um, I'm going to stop the video there. Otherwise, it's going to be me babbling more than I need to and reiterating this sort of stuff um, and uh, yeah, we'll hopefully we'll see your model sheet. Um, 